Mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on this 17th day of September 2012. I am your host, Alex Jones. We're going to be here for the next three hours, and I can't think of a more powerful lineup with the QE Unlimited being announced, the meltdown by design of Europe, uh, the 25 Armadas massing in the Strait of Hormuz for the gear up for the bombardment of Iran, then Webster Griffin Tarpley joining us. He was on yesterday for about 35 minutes. He'll be on for a full hour today. And Max Kaiser will also be joining us from London. He's moving to London from Paris. So he's going to be breaking down the whole financial end of the situation. To say that we are in absolute information overload right now is to not even cover it. But... Through all of what's happening, the Chinese and Japanese threatening war, uh, Europe melting down, uh, Arab Spring going into overdrive, attacks on U.S. embassies and facilities in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Egypt, uh, Sudan, Libya, basically everywhere. It is on global chaos. And out of that, the mega banks want to bring their order. Order out of chaos that's what we're facing that's what we're dealing with this is it this is the big move that's why they've got the police and the military militarized and dug in against the people worldwide it's why all these preparations are being made the globalists are preparing to try to make their move to cause giant regional wars that may slide into a third world war and out of that crisis a new world order george herbert walker bush's Fifth objective will emerge. Out of these troubled times, we see our fifth objective. A new world order will emerge. Order out of chaos, the Illuminati slogan. This is what we're facing. This is what we're dealing with. This is the issue. Our republic and the rest of the world hangs by a thread. And you're going to see a lot of craziness taking place. You're going to see a lot of of uh, infighting within the establishment. Uh, you're going to see a lot of uh, battle lines being drawn. Yesterday, Steve Pachinik, high level in the Council on Foreign Relations, black ops, you name it, you know, coming out and saying that Israel and Saudi Arabia killed the U.S. ambassador in Benghazi, Libya, off the charts. Uh, a lot of what he was saying, Tarpley was concurring with. When those two were concurring, look out. Uh, we've got just all of this unfolding right now. Th these are the times, like pre-World War I, pre-World War II. These are the times when the world is lining up right now with the backdrop of global hyperinflation looming with QE Unlimited. And I feel so sorry for the general public who doesn't even understand false politics, who, do, who isn't even informed on fake left-right debates of Republican-Democrat. Even when you study this 12, 14, 15, 16 hours a day for decades, it is somewhat murky until you pull back. And when you pull back and study history and study this ruling elite and study their eugenics-based sciences, their full-spectrum dominance mindset, covering all their bases, placing money on all you know areas of the crap table, then you understand uh, the larger plan here, and it is unbelievable. So we're going to go to break. We're going to come back and get into all of it, all of it, straight ahead. If you've got friends and family or people you care about who don't quite understand what's happening, you need to have them tune in right now, whether you're listening on XM 166, our local AM and FM stations, our global shortwave, or Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com with free audio streams and video streaming at PrisonPlanet.tv. If you're tuning in for the first time, you found it. The front lines in the fight for human liberty and civilization. It's all unfolding, ladies and gentlemen, exactly as we predicted it would. 
And we all better hope and pray we don't continue down the current path. We are headed down like a snowball sliding right into hell. We need to stop going downhill like a snowball headed for hell, to quote Merle Haggard. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Monday, the 17th day, the 17th day of September 2012. The one, the only Max Kaiser on QE Unlimited, global financial meltdown, hyperinflation, the design collapse of Europe into the EU banker superstate. All of it is happening. All of it is going according to globalist plan. All the chaos, all the bedlam, all the wars, all of it is part of their plan. The general public will say, they're wrecking things, they're creating poverty, they're destroying civilization. Now you got it. Now you know what Agenda 21 is. Now you understand you can't pick a side of the New World Order because you're either in the left hand or the right hand. Which are connected to forearms and upper arms and shoulders and a torso and a head and a waist and legs and feet that is a diabolical system. Let me explain something here. There are different factions and criminal elements in the global corporate structure that's anti-free market monopolistic before I get into the World War III news. This is so important to understand. But they all stand to gain off the corporate welfare of building the police state spy grid, the control grid. They all stand to gain from centralization. Even though over time, it destroys productivity, freedom, and society. They stand to gain by dumbing people down. Even though down the road, it means they'll have servile, addled minions that can't even perform for them. You've got all these evil factions battling with each other for control and power. But none of them will ever dismantle any of the machinery of tyranny because those are treasures to them that they're fighting over. The equipment of this whole juggernaut is what they want. The social engineers, the technocrats are upper level, but they're not at the highest level and they're mercenaries that give their genius, their understanding, their idiot savant skills in different specialized areas to the overlord class. And the overlord class, though they battle with each other over control of the levers, they will never decommission or shut down or stop any of this because they all dream of controlling it themselves. And basically, they're like a bunch of lemmings following a lamp in the night like moths right off the edge of a cliff. And they're all so competitive, none of them can ever not give in to pure evil or the most wicked scientific tactics of control because if they don't use it, somebody else will. And that's the whole Machiavellian in justifies the means that they teach special forces in this country for 50 years. I'm sure they've changed it since I have talked about this and Rush Limbaugh's talked about it as well, but I talked to some retired operators and they said, yeah, no, that's true. That you're from different joint forces, best of the best special forces, and they recruit you to go into Delta Force and there's other units that they sheep dip you out of even above Delta in this whole corporate mercenary system. And after they've gone through the months of rigorous qualification to the next level, when they're exhausted, they put them in a shack in bad conditions, mosquitoes biting them or whatever the case is, and, have, and, and give them 12 hours to read Machiavelli's The Prince, written 500 years ago. And then you write an essay on it. And if you say, I don't believe the end justifies the means, you don't compromise good morals in the name of beating evil. You don't become evil to defeat evil. They say, oh, very good. Yes, uh, now you've made it, but we're going to put you in this area of logistics. But if you say, I do believe 
the end justifies the means, and we need to be more evil than evil to protect good. Oh, you understand the greater secret. You're going to be promoted to the higher level. And that's basically what we face as a society. Is the system has gotten a bunch of people over the decades into the power structure who've then recruited still more who will rationalize anything they do. They've even got a lot of people who are twisted who think they're actually good working for this system. Who will do unspeakably horrible things like stage 9-11 in the name of winning this clash of civilizations between West and East, when at a higher level, the globalists are actually playing both sides off against each other to destroy society itself because to the truly evil high level globalist, civilization, decency, honor, beauty, purity, that is a threat because they've woven a web of deception and evil and ugliness and the darkness seeks to hide from the light. But to hide from the light that's so painful to them, who've turned themselves over to pure evil, they seek to destroy all that is good. And that's why if you study history, every culture, every society, every race manifests the same dark, murderous temples temples of doom. They build civilizations based on hellraiser-like worship of pure evil. Because once you let evil get in place, then greater evil will supplant that evil, and then still greater evil will supplant that evil, and then still greater evil will supplant that evil, until you get pure, distilled, absolute just total death. Death. Kill, steal, destroy, burn, bioweapons, atomic weapons, hydrogen weapons, scorched earth, black cities, poisoned water, dead oceans, genetic engineering run wild. Hell on earth is what is being produced. It is the fruits. It is the works. It is the sum total of what the system is moving us towards. There have been corrupt elites in the last 300 years in the West, but still they wanted to have big public works projects. They wanted to build palaces. They wanted to compete with other nations for who had the best scientists in literature and art. All that is going by the wayside. Who can produce the ugliest art? Who can produce the most twisted families? Who can, who can produce the sickest things? Who can turn creation on its head? Who can create an economic system to destroy wealth and destroy families and destroy creativity and destroy intellects? And who can chemically poison the population while having them work to build their own global government kill grid? It is life inverted. It is death. It is the symbol of humans, the star, the head, the arms, the legs, turned upside down. You know what all these Satanists and people think they know all this alchemy and, 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 and all this other mumbo jumbo? And they sit there and they wear pentagrams around their necks. They think it gives them all this power. They're a bunch of lunatics. They take the cross, it's a symbol of someone giving their life up to try to help others, and they turn it upside down. They say, it's all about me, it's about my power. And they don't understand, because they're lower level evil people who, who aren't even really evil, they're cowards who are afraid of the night, so they try to make a friend of it. And they try to exercise power. They try to build up their own little power bases to simply exercise power. And then the world doesn't give them that power like it promised. So they get deeper into evil, seeking after it, thinking that they'll gain power if they simply turn themselves over to the dark side. The dark side will destroy us all.
and we must turn away from it now. World War III is now not on the horizon. World War III is rolling up our street like a giant juggernaut, a war mock, a tank out of hell. And you know what empowers it? Our apathy, our not being involved. The average American right now, the polls are out, are so delusional. They're not concerned about dead troop numbers. They're not concerned about rioting. They're not concerned about foreign policy. They just want to go watch the football game. While World War III is being prepared, you've got a Western civilization in a trance, drugged out of their minds on sick culture and chemicals, having no idea the point that we've now reached. We are now being brought directly to the edge of the cliff. Just six months ago, we were 100 feet from the cliff. We're now five feet from the cliff. And those that want world war are shoving and pushing everything towards the edge. We'll be back to break it down. Geopolitical analysis straight ahead. We are 40 minutes out from Dr. Webster Griffin Tarpley joining us on this Monday edition. Then Max Kaiser joins us from England to break down QE Unlimited. He, of course, made his strongest prediction ever, and he's got a very accurate record inventor of the virtual trading software that's used on many stock exchanges today, he predicted that by April there will be a total collapse. He predicted that about a month ago on this broadcast. We're going to have him elaborate on that. He also predicted they would begin unlimited quantitative easing on multi-fronts. So that's who we have on, people that are accurate. Uh, the mainstream news has people on constantly who are inaccurate, but not because they're even stupid. They themselves are investing the ways our guests have been recommending while telling you to not invest in ways that protect you. Again, this is a culture of predatory activity. And the fish rots from the head down. And so now the entire culture is converting over to a predatory system. And a system of just complete lies. So that the establishment starts smoking their own dope, drinking their own Kool-Aid, believing their own propaganda. I mean, look separately from the Middle East at some of the news. China, Japan heading towards war, says U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta. And they've got ships threatening each other, protests in each other's countries. I mean, it is getting serious. Uh, we've got the head of the EU admitting that this is a plan to take over Europe, the debt, a third round of bailouts. It doesn't go to Greece or Spain. It never did. They just blame those countries. It goes to the mega banks whose operatives sign the countries on to derivatives. Uh, we've got all this other news uh, coming out domestically where the FBI says, yeah, we've got face scanning cameras up nationwide now following you as you walk down the street with your driver's license photo. Now, that's been going on for a while, but now they're announcing it. Just big brother on steroids. So we're going to be going over all of that. But shifting gears back into the Middle East, let's just go over some of these headlines. Ambassador Susan Rice, Libya attack, not premeditated. And it continues. I mean, who would believe that, that it was not premeditated? New York Times spins new video of Ambassador Stevens. It shows him being drugged through the streets as they chant, God is great, Allah Akbar, uh, obviously celebrating like they did with Gaddafi's dead body. And they say, oh, the Libyans were saving him, going to help him. So there's ever video of me being killed by a mob and then shooting me or whatever. Whoa, look, they're helping him. Remember Benazar Bhutto, Pakistan president? Video of, of the, her being shot. And our media said, she fell and hit her head. Doesn't matter if there's footage of her being machine gunned. She fell and hit her head. That's how dumb they think you are. That they tell you that, oh, just a little mob protesting killed the ambassador. Oh, yeah, no, no other governments are involved. Oh, and the Libyan government's like, no, Al-Qaeda out of Saudi Arabia did this. And who do you think runs Al-Qaeda? Who do you think put Al-Qaeda in the country? Continuing, uh, Syrian rebels burn American flags. Oh, the Al-Qaeda that Obama put in there, that NATO put in there, now burning American flags. We, we told you they would then turn around and say, we've got to bomb these countries. In fact, they're now saying Assad has to be invaded because Al-Qaeda's there that NATO landed and put in. 
I mean, I've studied history, and I've never seen anything like this. Usually, not usually, governments always at least had some narrative that could be halfway believed, even if it was bull. This is just total, total bedlam. Designed global chaos to distract you from the financial takeover that's happening. Look at this story out of Israel, Ynet News. Ex-envoy to Israel, U.S. will go to war in Iran in 2013. That's what Tarpley's saying. He's saying... This is meant as an October surprise to get rid of Obama, who's, again, their puppet. They want the new puppet, Romney, who can get conservatives behind him for a larger war. Who knows? We're going to find out. But this is all accelerating right now. Israel, El Al, looks to end Cairo flights. Increased numbers of foreign elements, jihad groups operating in Syria. Really? Leading Sunni clerics demand global ban on insults to Islam. They're talking about laws in the U.S. to restrict the First Amendment now for Muslims. See how the media blames a film connected to the FBI and the federal government? And then they use this false flag to try to take our rights. You see how that works? Here's another one. Libyan reports shred White House claim that Benghazi attack was spontaneous, driven by anti-Islam film. Yeah, no kidding. Think so? Iran's Revolutionary Guard commander says it's troops in Syria. We told you that six months ago. Now it's in Reuters. They're not ready to tell the childlike public. Iran, Iran is officially announcing that. It's a proxy war. Russia and Iran on the side of uh, Syria. The United States and NATO and Europe uh, backing Al-Qaeda. <laughs> While telling us give our rights up because Al-Qaeda is going to kill us. When the globalists just used al-Qaeda to kill the ambassador to stampede the U.S. into a war on Iran, but they're going to blame for it. So we have a global ruling class that are publicly setting up a private world government, exempt from all the laws they pass and put on us, that openly wants to establish a modern eugenics global empire based on destroying civilization, destroying art, literature, annihilating education. It is a new dark age by design. That is the environmentalist. That is the globalist. Uh, that is who they are. They stand for total anti-human world government while destroying the environment while they're at it, posing as environmentalists. Uh, that is their religion. It's, it's, it's really neo-feudalistic fascism. But those words are just words. You have to see the new world order coming into view out of these troubled times. The fifth objective will be realized, as George Herbert Walker Bush said back in 1991. And here we are. You can see the total plan, a, a, a consolidation of wealth, a system hell-bent on impoverishing the population so we can be more easily managed. And of course, we have to be more easily managed in our culling, in the soft kill operations going on all around you. Childhood cancer is up over 10,000%. Look up the numbers for yourself. They vary. Some are over 10,000. I've done the numbers on autism from 1 in 25,000 30 years ago to 1 in 58 now. That's over how many thousand percentage points up? Diabetes, type 2, up over 3,000% in the general population. In Hispanics, it's even more. Go look the numbers up. Neurological disorders, depending on the type, some are up over 100,000 times what they were in the 1950s. Lung cancer in women up sevenfold from what it was 20 years ago, even though smoking is way down in women in the last 30 years. Look up the numbers. Sevenfold increase in lung cancer. Gee, you think something's going on? I know it's fun to get scared of the Arabs and the Muslims and ask the government to take all your rights away because of it, but the government is run by foreign banks that run the radical Muslims, and they run them in your face and use them to take over Libya, Syria, Egypt, everywhere else, and then turn around and say, oh my gosh, they killed our ambassador.
oh, but then Obama plays along because they don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Oh, yeah, it was just some protesters that went in and killed the Navy SEALs and killed the ambassador. And then everybody else in the House stood down because, you know, it's coming out. There weren't just four people. The rest of the security, the rest of the security stood down. And all of you that work for this so-called government should remember what they did to SEAL Team 6, blowing up the helicopter at the site. Others spoke out, so they blew up most of the rest of the team. A few months later, I even talked to a Navy SEAL who's friends in Navy SEAL Team 6, and they said, yeah, yeah, there was a bomb on the helicopter. Really? You think so? They crammed 24 of you on the helicopter and fly out in the desert to a rescue mission. Of course, it wasn't a rescue mission. It was all made up. It's like Pat Tillman was charging the hill to fight Al-Qaeda. Turned out, oh, there wasn't any Al-Qaeda. Turns out we shot him. He begged for his life. We came up and shot him in the face three times. And why do we know that? Because the valiant colonel, the medical doctor, pointed out they'd murdered him. And so the whole story fell in. That's who we're dealing with. And I have to sit here and have, you know, different spies and people that you hear on the air, but also off the air, people you've, you've heard of but don't know have contacted me over the years, sit there and say, don't worry, Alex, you and your family are safe, which, of course, means me and my family are not safe. You know, I live in the real world where I talk to retired four-star generals. I live in the real world where I talk to current one-star generals. I live in the real world where I talk to colonels on a weekly basis. I live in the real world where I get information from FBI agents, you name it. And let me tell you something, folks. They're all scared. When the chairman of the Joint Chiefs comes out two weeks ago, guys, will you print it for me again? It was in the Associated Press and others. Headline, Dempsey says, don't blame U.S. if Israel attacks Iran. When they come out and start saying it's a bad idea, we're saying don't do it. When you see those type of breaks and fissures going on, you know there's a serious issue. You know that this attack on Iran that many analysts believe will probably lead to a giant world war. We better pray it's conventional and people don't start using nukes. But when militaries start losing, they start using nukes. And Russia rolled nukes into North Georgia whenever NATO-backed forces were overrunning them and said, we're getting ready to use nuclear weapons. And this can start real quick. The elites aren't building bunkers and digging in and building bunkers under their houses and getting 10 years supplies of food and everything else in the last few years because they wanted to play tiddlywinks. I told you about that billionaire defense company owner that I happened to run into, didn't even know who it was at the time. I went and looked it up and found out, wow, she was who she said she was. Talking about how she was leaving the U.S., this is four years ago, and I said, why are you leaving the U.S.? She said, there won't be a U.S. in four to five years. You remember the story, I told it many times. I said, what do you mean? She said, well, you just better get ready to get real popular. And I said, well, why do you say that? And I was at a law firm setting up some corporations. I said, I said, and this is in the waiting room. And I said, well, why do you say that? She said, because what you're saying is absolutely on target. Absolutely on target. And, and I'm moving to the Cook Islands. I'm out of here. Selling basically her holdings and getting out of the country. I mean, real good job, New World Order. You took over, you robbed everything. Now we get to have World War III. Thanks a lot. But again, you're evil. That's, that's where your God has led you. That's, that's where you always take people. That's where all these lunatics, whether it's Lenin, Stalin, Mao, Hitler, or a hundred other thugs before them, it always leads to huge wars, Armies buried to their necks in mud, collapsing societies, famines, and death. Because you people have got to have it all. You've got to run it all. You run everything but yourselves. You can't control yourselves. And you notice we told you when all this would happen. When they announced unlimited quantitative easing. When they started the, 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 the hyperinflation trajectory. When they move towards Iran, when all the Navy's mass, there's been 
six, seven times in the last five, six years that they've massed the aircraft carriers and U.S. forces. There's been a few French and British forces. There are now the navies of 25 countries massing in the Strait of Hormuz. That's what's happening. You've got armies massing. You've got B-2 and B-1 bombers dispatched to the Middle East last week. That's classified, by the way, what you just were told. I confirmed it through two different sources. One that saw it happen, so then I called another source. One of them wasn't even military. They're probably listening right now. Then I called the other source. They took off at uh, their West Texas base at, what, 3 a.m. till 5 a.m. to launch the whole wing. And then I talked to my other source. They're now sitting very close to the Middle East. I'll just leave it at that. That's what's going on. They don't move those things because they're good weapon systems, the Lancet, the Lancer, but they're hard to hold together. It's a good weapons platform, but it has a lot of technical problems. And they're all massing, ladies and gentlemen, all massing, all massing right now. And you see all the articles about, we've got to have a war with Iran. And they know the general European, but even more so the average American or Canadian, will buy saying that Iran is behind all this. Last year, they tried saying Iran was going to attack the Saudi ambassador in, in New York or D.C. Remember that? And that turned out to be a fraud. So now they're trying it again by using the Al-Qaeda that Saudi Arabia and others control. Saudi Arabia's big enemies with Iran, folks. You see, they know Americans think, oh... There's just, uh, you know, Muslims over there, and they all want to kill us. No, there's 19% there's Shiite, 80% Sunni, and then 1% Alawite and a few other subsects that are really Zoroastrian Christians mixed together. And you've got all these groups here, and the average analyst in government doesn't even know all the groups. I've been researching further, and Dr. Pachinik was talking about this, where the neocons don't even like CIA or State Department people that even have studied or have a degree in Arabic studies and can even communicate with them. They'll assassinate people who can even talk to Arabs. That's how dumbed down even the power structure is. So-called government experts and operatives don't even know what's going on. It's a joke. It's a bunch of lazy people that just want to cash their taxpayer paychecks. And a bunch of corporations fat off taxpayer money who are delusional. But why do you think the real generals and the real top CIA analysts and Mossad analysts and others are saying, don't do it. Don't attack Iran. Don't do it, BB. Don't do it. The globalist faction at the top, thinks that if they corner Israel against the wall, and if they corner the U.S. against the wall, that the overwhelming force will be forced into this clash of civilization and this giant war that will fold Russia, intimidate China, and make all the Middle Eastern countries kneel. That is not going to happen. Empires don't really go to Afghanistan to die. Quite a few have gone there. Where empires really go to die in the 20th century and the, and the 19th century, they go to Russia to die. That's where empires go. Empires go to Russia to die. And it's madness. You look at John Corzine, 40 to 1 bets on MF Global with other people's money thinking he'd win. And then somebody over at Goldman Sachs that he formerly headed and J.P. Morgan, it was really J.P. Morgan, screwed him. There's not even honor amongst these people themselves. They're crazy. <sighs> Meanwhile, while World War III is being prepared, what's the federal government doing? Buying 1.4 billion bullets plus. And when the public gets concerned, you just put out a disinfo piece saying, hey, it's only 174,000 bullets, never mentioning the other 13 billion plus, or 1 billion, 300 million plus, excuse me, or do the math, 1 point whatever it is, billion. The point is, is that 
We're here. We're here watching it about to happen again, this time with nuclear and high-tech bioweapons, chemical weapons. Uh, it won't just be staged terrorists we're going to have to worry about. There will undoubtedly be real acts of sabotage and asymmetrical warfare all over the place. This is not going to be a good thing. But the globalists are all dug in and have this planned. They want the wrecking of civilization to happen like they funded Hitler to wreck Europe so that then they can roll in and reorganize the whole planet under their planetary regime and bring in their one world government where you're not allowed to criticize any religion based on the demand of 25% of the world, the Muslims. You can see the whole Adam Weishaupt plan coming into view. A new world order out of these troubled times. So government is gearing up and training the army and police not to fight Al-Qaeda, who publicly works for them. Al-Qaeda is just the backdrop of fear and who they use to overthrow countries. Now, they are gearing up and training the paramilitary system for a civil war in America. And they can trigger it by not delivering the welfare checks. They can trigger it by going after our guns. And you have to understand the globalists are all in these armored redoubts. They're all into these national security systems in these keeps, in these fortresses, in these castles, in these um, hardened facilities. To use the modern parlance. And to them, it's all beautiful. This great time of wrecking, just like U.S. and British banks sent, what was it, 18,000 U.S. citizens and others over into Russia to bring it down. And then instead of giving the people freedom from the czars, they put something in probably 20 times worse and killed most of the Christians uh, in uh, Ukraine and other areas. I mean, the globalists have this planned here, ladies and gentlemen, and it's not pretty. And thank God for George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, 236 years into the future, the only thing we've got left of free men is our open exercise of the First Amendment is like a habit. And habits can work for you or against you. But we, we have such a habit of speaking our mind that all the intimidation cannot shut people up and folks are learning the truth. So we have the First Amendment. God bless them. We're going to break the chains with that. And God bless them. We have the ancient right of any free man of weapons, of armaments. Not to offensively use them. My God, we don't want to go to that. But they're there, nonetheless, as a massive check and balance against the globalist hubris. We are not the Germans. We are not the Russians. We are not the Chinese when the CIA put Mao Zedong in. And the CIA put Fidel Castro in. That's on record. Because the CIA is the foreign banks, folks. It is Skull and Bones. It is the Illuminati. Look it up. It was founded by Skull and Bones. Found out of England and Germany. Chapter 322. It is here to bring this insane rage of, of, of death and destruction upon us. Because it's what these people like. This is their holiday. This is their season. This is their world. This is their beauty. This is their art. Their art is burning cities and starving children. Their art is piles of skulls. And all their weak acolytes who seek after power have no idea that they won't be given the power they were promised. They will be paint on the palette to be placed on the canvas. You are going to have, you're going to beg for God to protect you, those of you that have served evil. You're going to beg. You're going to grind your teeth. You're going to pull your hair out. You're going to, you're going to fall down on the ground and wish you hadn't have been so wicked. Because you cowards have run to evil because you're afraid of it. Most of you, I know your secret. Most of you that think you're really evil, you're weak and pathetic. You're not really, truly evil. You think evil's beautiful? You're going to really get to get into the lake. You're going to get to go for a swim in what you've been admiring from your little hilltop vantage point. You like the smell of death? You're going to get to drink out of that cup until your guts bust. And I hope all of you like it. Because it's what you want, it's what you get. You want bio warfare, you want chem warfare, you want hydrogen weapons detonating over U.S. cities. You want World War III, you want starvation, you think death's sexy, you think skulls are pretty. 
if we don't turn this around, you're going to get you today. And we will go over all these articles when Tarpley gets on with us in the next hour. Then Max Kaiser joining us. Can't think of two better people to have on to break all this down. But they are preparing to try to launch a global conflict that out of the crisis, a new world order will be built on. Again, I'll remind you of your new listener. It has been openly announced that mega banks that created trillions, over a thousand trillion in false assets, sold and signed on to by governments, have declared that we are their slaves in hundreds of financial publications and on television as a public notice. They follow a law of telling you what they've done. Very esoteric. And they have announced their uh, domination of us. They are now announcing the paramilitary occupation of the West uh, by uh, goon forces. Europe has TSA-style goons also uh, now showing up all over the highways to oppress the public, their real target, uh, while telling you that they're doing it to protect you from al-Qaeda, that they publicly run. Now to get the United States behind an attack on um, Iran and Syria, probably Syria first and then Iran. And by the way, that's in the news today. They're saying, we've got to have boots on the ground. I've got like six articles here. We've got to have boots on the ground in Syria because Al-Qaeda is there. That's how dumb they think you are. They land Al-Qaeda in helicopters and, and infiltrate them and exfiltrate them across the borders with Jordan and uh, Turkey. That's not debated now for eight months. Now they publicly are saying we've got to bomb Assad to stop Al-Qaeda that our criminal government put in. And they think the public is so stupid. I sit there and talk to good old boys and they go, I know it's true what you're saying. I just still want to get my rights up because of Al-Qaeda. I just am still, I just, and I'm like, can't you, aren't you smart enough to get this? It's so over the top though. I know things that are so simple are hard to understand. I've actually found that in my life. And it's so painful to see that we're going into this time. All I know is we're here to the end, hardcore trying to warn people. And I want to say this, too. In fact, I meant to start the show with this today. I am not going to get into one side or the other of Romney Obama. Because at the top, they're run by the same people. But they need us to choose a side so that we're complicit in our own destruction. And so we have this idea that, oh, well, at least we had some choice. So that we never focus in on the real controllers. It's a continuation of the policy to use Al-Qaeda to overthrow these Middle Eastern countries. And Al-Qaeda light to take over Egypt. It's a continuation to then have Al-Qaeda kill the ambassador. That's a false flag to get into Iran, to get into Syria. It doesn't even mean Mitt Romney was behind it. Because the people behind Mitt Romney are the ones behind Obama. They're trying to prod America into this Iran war. It's deeper than even what Tarpley says. And I think when I bring that up, he's going to have to admit it. He's just playing politics with this because he thinks Obama is better than Romney. By the way, he, he thought Obama was horrible and was for McCain. You see, when you get up to this level of real analysis, it isn't about parties anymore. It's about what does the power structure want? And you can believe whatever they want, it's bad for us. Uh, but it's even deeper than that. Obama is playing along with the official story that it was just random people that killed him and it was the film that did it. That's what the neocons are putting out too for a clash of civilizations. So I won't give Obama cover in this because there's connections to the Israelis and Saudi Arabians in this. Like Obama is, 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 is better because they would do this to him. They didn't do this to Obama. He's a puppet that reads off a teleprompter. They did this to us, the American people in Europe to start a clash of civilizations, a new jihad crusade attack against each other so the globalists can referee the whole thing and get everybody into deeper debt and take liberties. Growing up as a child, I could have never imagined that I would be in the position I'm in today, able to reach tens of millions of people a week that does not puff up my ego. It does the opposite. It's an incredible responsibility. And to know that we're all in this position now under a eugenics-based world government with a cosmology of anti-civilization, anti-human. Because we've had corrupt elites before, but I can say this about the United States, and I've studied it. 
it has not been perfect, but compared to other countries, it's been the best. And until the 60s, our country really did try to build up other nations, even countries they, they took over. And had an idea of a renaissance and a true enlightenment and was egalitarian. There were a lot of evil people that operated within the system and there were some bad things that went on. But we were a overall good society. We were delusional. We did some bad things to certain groups that were leftovers from ancient times. But that happened in those times. We're now talking about what was developing in the last 200 years. And now to see the United States as a absolutely bankrupt, culturally, spiritually, financially, devoid of any honor system, and to see the system actively waging war against everything good, even if you're evil, you should know that evil in society more effectively can survive and operate and hide behind good, and that, and that a system without good, you know, the Illuminati would call it balance. I don't believe in that, but balance is real, but not the idea of, well, we can do evil as long as we do good. There's a balance, you know, balance in the force. You know, you see this in, the, in, in kind of the establishment New Age version and the rest of it. But, but, but that's what... That's what a lot of these people believe. But I've studied the globalists. As you get up higher into this, they just believe in death and destruction. You know, a Satanist thinks, me, 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 all my power, all my enjoyment. I'm going to be a hedonist. I'm going to be nihilistic. Eat, drink, be merry. That's, that's low-level stuff. The globalists are Luciferians. They think they're God. They think they're becoming gods. They uh, think they're going to be gods. They... So they love transhumanism. It ties into their cosmology that they're going to be God. And all I see is a bunch of people disconnected from the universe. All I see is a bunch of power-tripping madmen who don't have real vision. If you have real vision, you know that you need to build civilization and enlighten and empower. And that you need to build up. And you need to fight the slide towards decadence and corruption and evil because it sucks everything into it. And unless you really are committed to total death, total destruction of our species, the end of life on this planet, then you should join good because evil is a con game and a lie. That's all I can say there. And that's why evil tries to confuse you and tell you thinking a woman is beautiful is evil. No, that's not. That's God's design. That's programming. Or, uh, you know, flogging yourself with guilt for little things you do. That's how the system controls you. While they have no guilt, they have, no, they have nothing to restrain them. They are like a wild runaway train off the edge of a cliff. We come back after this break. I'm going to hit a few top news stories and go to Webster, Griffin, Tarpley. Uh, recap the top stories. Uh, and we're going to break down where we left off last night. Where the world is financially right now and where he sees QE Unlimited going, defining that, and then we'll get into the geopolitical ramifications because we know historically what these kleptocratic oligarchs do in their quest to dominate humanity. They'll play all sides off against each other while posing as the moderators, the saviors, the referees over the conflagration that they themselves have engineered. We will cover what is the most dangerous time in human development in history. When we come back after this quick break, I am Alexander Emmerich Jones. See the Earth, and if we look at the Strait of Hormuz, we see 25 nations' fleets massing, the biggest massing ever in the Strait of Hormuz, reported by the Associated Press, London Telegraph. B-1, B-2 bombers have been covertly dispatched. F-18s, F-16s, Warthogs looks like a build up to the last Gulf War going on right now. The, a lot of top Israeli envoys, it's in Harats and other uh, publications, are saying they're waiting till Romney gets in so that they don't have an election to deal with and the strike is on. Others say uh, that they are activating Al Qaeda, the globalist star, to kill the ambassador, to attack embassies, to attack uh, embassies and facilities, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Egypt. Sudan, uh, Libya, it's incredible.
and it's a totally schizophrenic policy where the West has put Al Qaeda in, the Libya and Syria and other areas publicly, and that's the main force. CFR a month ago said, "quote We need Al Qaeda. They're doing a great job, uh, you know, unifying everybody. They're murdering Christians, murdering Jews, murdering Alawite Muslims, cutting their heads off, throwing them off buildings, desecrating Orthodox churches." We're Paul proselytized. We're seeing all of this, and it's 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 in the back of the news. And now we have the ambassador dead. I had Webster, Tar uh, Webster Tarpley, Dr. Tarpley on yesterday breaking down that uh, he believes it's a uh, October surprise, like the whole hostage things with Carter back in 1979, 1980. Uh, regardless of this, at the top, the same banks run Obama, run Romney. And I'm not going to get in either camp. I'm not going to sit here and get in this election and support either or. I will not be part of this. I will pull back and analyze what's going on. And I agree with Tarpley. This has got neocon fingerprints on it. Neocon groups, the same ones that upload the Adam Gadon fake Al-Qaeda videos and the Intel Center uh, video layer caught. Uh, the same groups, you know, this FBI informant, producer of anti-Islam, is a Fed snitch, of course. He's just the cutout to take the blame for it. This has got Langley, Virginia written all over it. And that's now even coming out. All of this is happening with the backdrop of QE Unlimited. Now, they promised no QE3, and they said, see, no QE3, we're going to give $85 billion. It's $85 billion a month, $40 billion of it to buy derivatives from uh, bad mortgages, from uh, paper, credit default swaps. Ladies and gentlemen, they're announcing Barroso last week that Europe has been conquered, a super federal system is being set up. They designed all this, bankrupting the countries by their operatives, signing them on to the bank's debt, bringing them into a Europe where they have a super federal Europe run by banks. They're announcing global banks have conquered the United States. They have engineered the collapse and are riding the collapse down like uh, Slim Pickens in Dr. Strangelove rides the atomic bomb down or the hydrogen bomb down um, over... Russia. I mean, I mean, this is this is madness. This is people full of bravado, hubris, chutzpah, whatever you want to call it. This is Hitler turning into Russia, Napoleon turning into Russia, Alexander the Great going to Afghanistan. This is madness. Let me just read a few headlines. We're going to Tarpley, and then uh, for five minutes of the next hour, and then Max Kaiser joins us on the economic angle. We are being fed this line of bull by Obama's people that this was not coordinated and some protesters killed the Navy SEALs and overrun the, um, the uh, it's not an embassy, it was a sub substation. So we've got that going on. We've got Syrian rebels being funded by the West, burning American flags and burning churches down. Headline, Infowars.com, Syrian rebels burn American flag while Obama sends the millions in taxpayer dollars. Ex-envoy to Israel, U.S. will go to war with Iran in 2013. Ynet News, Israel al, al stopping flights to Cairo. Increased numbers of foreign element jihadi groups operating in Syria. And I've got it in the stack, six different articles we're going to cover, where they say we've got to invade Syria with boots on the ground. NATO does and bomb them because Al-Qaeda is taking over. Man, that's incredible. Our criminal government puts Al-Qaeda in publicly, calls them freedom fighters, and then says we got to invade because of Al-Qaeda. I mean, this is a new level of order out of chaos, operating on a public in a trance. Leading Sunni clerics demand global ban on insults to Islam. That'll be used to take all our free speech, this whole UN global government plan to ban criticizing any religion. Europe already's done it. We're in trouble, folks. Google takes down our videos for no reason, mildly criticizing government, but is leaving this video up. I'm not saying take it down, but they're already censoring. Unbelievable. This is part of a PSYOP, Google's NSA. That's on record. Uh, Iran's Revolutionary Guard commander says its troops are in Syria. That's Reuters. That's been known for months. Now they're just admitting it. B big proxy war. Russian spitznets, Iranian Republican Guard fighting Al-Qaeda backed with British, U.S., and other special forces. I mean, this is insane. And who did Al-Qaeda kill under orders? They killed the ambassador. Who do they work for? They work for the criminals that run our government. Pakistanis try to storm U.S. outpost, one killed. New York Times, Israeli foreign minister, U.S. ignored Arab radicalization, ignored it. The United States, Israel, and others run the radicalization. Israel created Hamas, 1973. That's on record. Jerusalem Post, U.S. is preparing for a long siege of Arab unrest. New York Times, 
head of uh, president of um, Egypt calls for calm as protests grow. Says they're being funded by the West. No kidding. Israeli leader makes case against Iran on U.S. TV. All of this is designed. Stir the Arabs up, put al-Qaeda in, get a civil war between Shiite and Sunni going. Just tell the American people, hey, that's al-Qaeda, that's Iran, when Iran's the opposite of al-Qaeda, they're Shiite. And then say we got to attack Syria and Iran because al-Qaeda is there. And, and it is true al Qaeda is in Syria. They're in the news. I'll dig it out of the stack saying we got to have boots on the ground. Let's cover that first briefly with Webster Tarpley. Then we'll get into the economics. Then we'll tie it all together. But Webster, I understand you were on yesterday and privately told me, yes, we've never been in a greater danger of an Iran attack, first Syria, World War III. But you said, I don't want to you know, really go there because this is being used for political stuff. Let's just be honest, geopolitically, in a brief summation, tying it all together up front, what are we facing right now? How dangerous is this period in the world? What is the overall, in just two minutes, method to the mega banks, Anglo-American system program? What is the end game? What do they think they're going to get out of this? Well, naturally, the, the the war danger has been high and and remains high, and it, I think it focuses in particular on Syria. The the Syrian civil war, I guess by now it is a civil war, really more of a of an invasion by these Al Qaeda death squads. Yeah, proxy NATO, Al Qaeda destabilization, asymmetrical special forces attack program. Right. This this looks very much like the Spanish civil war, right? The Spanish civil war of 1936 to 1939 was the beginning of a clash between Nazi Germany, fascist Italy supporting Franco and his fascists. And then there was the Spanish Republic, which was supported by the Soviets and some others. And you can see that was a kind of a prelude to, to World War II. And the Spanish Civil War ended in March of 1939. And then World War II began uh, pretty much in, in September. So the danger is that. However, let's also take a step back. I looked at that article in the Daily Telegraph, and I just had to laugh. When you see a headline that says, British Armada, oh, the British Armada, uh, the massive British naval power in the Gulf. Well, this is a bad joke. The British Armada uh, hasn't been sailing for quite a few centuries, uh, probably World War Farmer, II. The point is they mass yeah. ships before Gulf 1 and 2. This has been right. done before. That's fine. On the other hand, this is, now this is ironic, this is a scheduled exercise. This is a drill. Now, nobody knows better than I do that drills go live. On the other hand, the majority of drills do not go live, right? The majority of drills are drills. It's the, the one that comes along every now and then that goes live that is the one that you have to worry about. But anyway, we have to look at capabilities, right? You can't worry about intentions. You have to look at capabilities. And the capabilities for war are, are certainly there. It seems to me, again, that this focuses more on Syria uh, in, in the immediate sense than it does on Iran. If you're going to start a war with Iran, and I think the imperialist planners have seen this for quite a while, you've got to eliminate Syria above all, because Syria uh, is a principal ally, the, really the only ally of Iran sure. in the Arab world. And you've got to do something about Hezbollah. Because Hezbollah is sitting there very close to Israel, and they have built up a tremendous capability with uh, various kinds of missiles, right? They have the, the sort of World War II type missiles, but now they've got some pretty uh, You've got to cut precision. off Hezbollah's supply lines from Iran that. through Syria. So I think it's less likely that there's going to be a direct attack on Iran until they have been thoroughly isolated. And whether that works or not is now uh, the big question. So it seems to me... There's a lot of psychological warfare, and we can't always be preaching, you know, the end of the world for next week. This doesn't work. Um, I, I would be a little bit skeptical about this hype that we see in the London Daily Telegraph and elsewhere. Because, again, it seems to me that... Right, well, let, sure, let me, let me stop you on that. Part. It was in 2006 or seven that I disagreed with you when you said the, the Iran war was on, and I said it wasn't. We had a big fight over that. And I said it wasn't on at that time. You do remember that, correct? Yes, and I'll tell you what's, what stopped it then was when uh, when uh, Putin made his trip to Tehran and got photographed with Ahmadinejad. Uh, okay, in so, a, in a exactly. so my so point is, is the we have the, stopped the this from happening. A, we have stopped this from Russians, happening. We, we, yeah, we have done something. Well, all no, the American the Russians, people, yeah. No, the Russian government, the Putin, 
the, the main person, the biggest factor for peace in today's world is Putin. And there's no other way to cut it. And don't be embarrassed to say so. You, you don't have to have provisos about not liking Putin. Like him, like him or, or hate him, Putin is the big factor for peace because he's the only one who deters the Anglo-Americans. He provides cover for the Chinese and he allows this, these other countries to sort of follow along and build well, up. Sure, uh, and we all counter- know why Putin's involved because the road to Moscow goes through Damascus and Tehran. We'll be right back. It's all grand chessboard. Stay with us. By the way, Dr. Tarp was a doctor of history. He's an author, researcher. He has an incredible mind. I'm not trying to get to fight with him here uh, as we went to break. You know, saying, you know, he's like, hey, let's not say, you know, we're going to have into the world. I'm not saying that. Then I'm like, hey, Webster, you thought back what was in, in 2007 that it was imminent going to happen. And it was. And I see the same parallels, but then some. You've got open talk of the Japanese and China heading towards war, says U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta. Regardless, that's an amazing headline. You've got uh, Chinese leaders disappearing. You've got uh, coups going on. Zero Hedge has an excellent article we've got up at Infowars.com. A world on the verge. And I'm going to cover this a little bit in the next segment before we get into the economics uh, here. My point is, Webster, the average American isn't even paying attention to what's going on. To the point of thinking, oh, we've got to give our rights up Al-Qaeda. And I'm just pointing out Al-Qaeda is this jihadi brigade of the globalist. And I know, of course, you've uh, helped expose that for decades. So I'm just trying to understand here uh, what is going on. I, I mean, it, w- tell us what you think is happening militarily. I mean, are you saying we shouldn't be concerned? Yes, you have to be concerned. But but again, I, I think it's important to restate the framework also for your radio listeners who might not have heard heard the conversation yesterday. I would say this is the Romney campaign. In other words, if you want to know who's blowing up the Middle East right now, the Romney campaign is doing that. And the Romney campaign means not some little group of people in Boston who put out press releases and schedule campaign events, but it means this complex of forces in particular in the intelligence community, that want Romney in and Obama out. And that seems to be the majority of the, or at least the, the, you know, the most active part of the intelligence community. It goes to this CIA Mormon mafia. There's a CIA Mormon mafia, a, an FBI Mormon mafia. The, the, the CIA Mormon mafia would come into it in the following way. The ambassador in Libya, who happened to be at the consulate in Benghazi, or actually at a safe house attached to the consulate in Benghazi, was killed by this group called Ansar al-Sharia, as far as can be told. So Ansar al-Sharia is just the Libyan Islamic fighting group, or al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, under a new name. And the head of that is this guy Kumu. And I wrote about Kumu a year and a half ago. Kumu was part of the... Uh, Islamic Emirate of Derna, in other words, a terrorist uh, principality that had been created by this guy, Hasidi Hassadi Belhaj. All these guys have multiple names. The groups have multiple names. You have to get used to this. They're all moving targets. But th- this uh, this Kumu appears to have given the order or actually carried it out himself so that his professionally trained veterans who have been fighting in Libya, a lot of them have been fighting in Syria, they went and killed Ambassador Stevens, not even at the consulate, as I understand it, but at this uh, nearby safe house. Now, Kumu was in Guantanamo for five years. He was trained. He was uh, prepared for his new career. The only way you get out of Guantanamo is if you swear that you're going to do what the CIA tells you to do from then on for the rest of your life. And that's what Kumu undoubtedly did. No, I mean, they've had suicide bombers, everything. They come out of there, they they admittedly have a CIA base within the base where they engage, this is even mainstream news, in mind control, drugging. They've got drugs where they can uh, uh, stop your heart and and then sit there and have you beg. I mean, mean, just incredible what they do. Right. So so if, if Kumu kills Ambassador Stevens, The question has to go to the CIA, and I would say in particular to the CIA Mormon Mafia, the the people in the CIA who feel that their careers will be favored by Romney, and they will, because there will be unbelievable Mormon nepotism. Look, I got to say this, Webster. 
I want to get into the economy. We covered this for uh, you know half an hour yesterday. That's fine to get into the Mormon mafia, all this other stuff. But we've already said it. But this who's doing it? No, no, that's I, who's doing I, I know what we covered see. it yesterday. I want to get into the economy when we come back. But he, he, here's the deal: you were against Obama. Now you're against Romney. How can it's all? I'm run against the ruling class. I'm against the ruling class and their main line. Now, here's the other problem we have: if if you want to take power, you need to have a political movement, an independent political movement with a program to take power. Mm. If you're not ready to take power, you're automatically reduced to trying to maneuver between two or three or whatever they are, existing alternatives. So uh, we needed to be building an independent alternative over the last that couple did, of years. That didn't happen. And, and it didn't happen. So now we're reduced again to you know trying to see which is the more dangerous. I would say Romney is the more danger at this point simply because he's surrounded by these neocons. He has no clue what All he's right, doing. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's come back. Surrounded let's by come back. Let's, we got to go to break. These are hard breaks. Come back and do five minutes on Romney again. But then I really want your take. You're an economist, a good one. I want your take on the QE Unlimited. That's why you're back today. Stay with me. All right, we're going back to Webster Griffin Tarpley uh, here in just a moment. As you notice, the real world is not just some simple thing of, here's the brown-skinned Muslims, let's nuke them, and we'll be safe. And here's the blue-shirted TSA man that's going to take your son or daughter behind closed doors to make sure bin Laden isn't hiding in their underwear. Or, oh, the FBI's watching you with face-scanning cameras. The ruling system wants an authoritarian takeover. They are waging war against small farms, businesses, everything. Bad guys run things. And... Playing into this whole deal of who's better or who's worse, I'm not doing it. But I think it's important to analyze the different camps to discredit that system so that people understand what we're facing. Uh, before we go back to Webster Griffin Tarpley, don't forget this broadcast is listener supported. So be sure and support our local AM and FM affiliates, local sponsors. Uh, visit them, support them, also sponsor the show. The show's really growing. Uh, spread the word about our local AM and FM stations. Uh, you can also uh, support the uh, sponsors at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, the web banners, a lot of great products and information up there. Also, when you buy books, videos, T-shirts uh, at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsShop.com, takes you to the same place. Those purchases fund the growing news organization. Also, we have a 15-day free trial for InfoWarsNews.com, InfoWarsNews.com, or originally, now for almost 10 years, PrisonPlanet.tv. 17 years of my material information, almost 10 years with that site, the nightly news, the, the video streams of this uh, daily radio show slash TV show. One membership is six memberships, really. But we need to put that pitch up there because that's really the best pitch we've got, the truth. Uh, that we let the same username and passcode be used by six people simultaneously. So just create a username and passcode that obviously isn't the code to your, you know, your bank account. And share it. Or we may just make it where one is six. I don't know. I'm going to make it easier for you. I mean, it's not any easier than you just make the code and give it to people. The point is prisonplanet.tv, $5.95 a month. That's less than a dollar per person's membership. And if you get a yearly membership, you get three months free. So it's even less than a dollar a month. Ladies and gentlemen, prisonplanet.tv. Go there, support us, sign up, get the commercial free podcast, so much more. Prisonplanet.tv. That's also funding our operation. And remember, we carry the very best preparedness items at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, whether it's the great products from eFoodsDirect.com, uh, whether it is the Life Straw Field water filter that I've used out in the bush here in Travis County, incredible system right into, you know, fetid water, you name it. And we've got the Pro Peers discounted, the Gravity Fed stainless steel filters at a price no one can match. Our regular price is the lowest. We're the biggest distributor. 10% off with the promo code WATER at checkout. All available at InfoWarsStore.com. And you also, again, support the broadcast by spreading the word about PrisonPlanet.tv, InfoWars.com, and other uh, sites that we have like InfoWars.net. Okay, I just wanted to read a few of these headlines before we go back to Webster and he can get into Tarpley. Uh, I, mean, I mean, Tarpley can get into uh, Mitt Romney and, and, and what he thinks about that. Even though we took, covered it yesterday, that's fine. Different audience will cover that. And then we'll get into uh, what I got him on about, the economy and where he sees that going. Uh, but world on the verge of war. 
Uh, we've got uh, South Africa shooting people with rubber bullets at miners. We've got Spain, Greece, Portugal have resumed uh, protesting austerity. People are looting grocery stores in Spain. U.S. embassies have been attacked in Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Morocco, Sudan, Lebanon, India, Bangladesh, uh, Indonesia, Pakistan's got uh, different uh, facilities being attacked. Japan is appropriating Chinese uh, contested islands, provoking a firestorm of retaliation, including demands for war with Japan. The Japanese ambassador to China dies mysteriously. Netanyahu's telling Meet the Press Iran will make a nuke in seven months and must be stopped beforehand. Warships from 25 countries, including the United States, Britain, France, Saudi Arabia, UAE are launching a military exercise. Trade of use pre-planned. We have this whole thing's pre-planned. A third U.S. aircraft carrier, the CV, CVN-74 Stennis carrier, is en route to Iran with ETA of about 10 days. And finally, a potential catalyst to light the whole mess on fire. Iran's Revolutionary Guard announcing that troops are now on the ground in Syria. Tell us something we don't know. And it goes on and on. That's on Infowars.com. A war on the verge in the Middle East, a world on the verge of war, that's the question. All right, Tarpley, you got the floor until we end this hour. Take it away with Romney and what you really think is happening. I respect your view. doesn't mean I totally agree with it, but it may be the case. Uh, the system's certainly starting to turn against Obama at certain levels. And, you know, the media normally that's lapdog is like really grilling them on these ridiculous statements that, you know, the, a few protesters killed the ambassador and the Navy SEALs. Ambassador Susan Rice, Libya attack not premeditated. What does that mean? Why does the system want Romney in your view? And then please give us your breakdown on where the world financial system is right now and where you see QE going in the future. Well, the uh, the Wall Street establishment, it seems, uh, wants Romney. He's he's one of them, after all. He's a hedge fund hyena. He's a corporate raider. He's a, uh, a vulture capitalist. And he's the kind of guy that will not only give them what they want in terms of loot, which Obama has largely done, but he'll also give them the honor in society that Obama can't give them because it would screw up Obama's relations with his own base. They, they generally object to Obama not so much for what he does, but for what he says, right? He's, Obama's got to cover his left flank by, uh, by bad-mouthing Wall Street, and they don't want that anymore. They want everything. They want the loot and the honor. They want to be hailed as the saviors of the, uh, of the country. So. We've gone through, I think, that without the CIA and without that CIA Mormon mafia, I would, I would strongly guess, you couldn't have Kumu and that group of, uh, let's say, Guantanamo trainees uh, coming to kill the ambassador Stevens in, uh, in Benghazi. Notice that the extreme reactionaries and neocons are now putting out that the ambassador was homosexual as if this somehow made this less of a crime. It's a very, very strange thing. So you'd have to look at uh, homophobic forces in the intelligence community. I think it takes us back to precisely that same group. So uh, you mentioned the National Security Agency, or should I say Google. Uh, you mentioned Google refusing to take down this, uh, this uh, stupid, scurrilous uh, film. Uh, they have merged practically with the NSA, as you pointed out, and let's not forget, Dan Senior, who is now one of the top advisors to the Romney campaign, Dan Senior is the guy who tells Paul Ryan what to say, what to do on foreign policy. Dan Senior was attached to, uh, to Google, I think, in a pretty high uh, post. The other side of it that I think is important is where does this film come from? Uh, forget about Sam Basile. Forget about this character, Nakula Nakula. That's the same person, allegedly. This is a little fish. This is some kind of a drug pusher who's gone into a, a deal with the feds, and he's therefore a controlled witness. No, he's the classic snitch that they use to put people in prison. He's a classic right. cutout. Right, and, and, but he's not. This is not the essential person. The person who actually signed for the for the permit to make the film and put out the casting call and actually had the premises, the studio where this was done is this other guy, Nasrallah. And Nasrallah is a Coptic Christian. The Christians of Egypt uh, are the Copts, and he's a big Coptic activist. And then we get right to the, to the main uh, issue, which is he's part of this thing called the Islamophobia Network. And this has been written up. There's a, 
There's a study of this by the Center for American Progress. Just look up Islamophobia Network and you'll, you'll get all the names of these people. Uh, a lot of people would, would know Pamela Geller. She's sort of the chairwoman of this thing. Uh, it's international. They have Geert Wilders in Holland, a racist politician who just lost the elections at the beginning of last week. And they have something called uh, Stop the Islamization of America, S-I-O-A. And then they have another one called, and this is funny, Stop the Islamization of Nations, S-I-O-N. So Sion, Zion, same difference, I guess. But you can see what this is. This is a, this is a, uh, a group of... Uh, People, I think, motivated by uh, by hatred, right? They're Islamophobic, but they're Islamophobic with with a very definite uh, agenda. And one of the people in this group, the thing that makes this most important is that John Bolton appears at their uh, rallies, right? They had a they had a rally. This was the group that that uh, put up a big fight about this uh, mosque near uh, Ground Zero, near the former World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan in, in August and September of 2010. They were feeling their oats. They had a big conference. Nasrallah was a speaker, the cop who essentially made the movie. And then uh, Am Ambassador Bolton, right, uh, or Secretary Bolton. Now, Bolton is the guy who would probably be Secretary of State for Romney. So he's meshed with these scurrilous uh, individuals in the Islamophobia network. So I think that's pretty clear, right, that, this, that you can look at it and say this movie or trailer or whatever it is, is a production of the Romney campaign. They did this. And I think it would be important for media to uh, to delve into this uh, more because it's a it's a real uh, scandal. Otherwise, all of the other rioting and stuff is either spontaneous because, you know, there there is this capability to get these things going in a spontaneous way or it's uh, the CIA or you know British or NATO network saying let's let's go let's go out in the streets now a couple of things that could be at work here since the person involved making the movie against Mohammed is a Coptic Christian this sets up something really serious for Egypt right Coptic Christians are about 10 percent of the population of Egypt if you get some kind of an explosion there that could become really, really bloody and really, really ugly. And that would destabilize Egypt. That would essentially be a civil war in Egypt. And that may be what these Anglo-American lunatics are looking for. The other thing which I think is, is extremely important is you have to remember that Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Bahrain and Kuwait and Oman and probably Jordan and, and Morocco also – the monarchies of the Arab world, these are reactionary monarchies, absolute monarchies, but especially Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, and maybe Qatar, but those, that group, the, the Gulf, they are on the verge of re revolution. And this would be a real revolution. This would not be a fake color revolution, a fake Arab spring that doesn't change anything. Sure. Remember, a revolution means an institutional change. You overthrow a monarchy, that's a revolution. You you end slavery. That's a revolution. Right. But in this case, they probably have both. Right. They have household slavery as well as as well as absolute monarchy. One of the effects of changing the subject uh, is, is to help the, uh, the Saudi royal house, frankly, as long as people are running around saying freedom and democracy, freedom and democracy, human rights. That's really bad for the Saudi uh, monarchy, right? That puts the tremendous pressure on them, as well as on these fakers in Bahrain, right? The uh, the the, the uh, royal family there, and then the ones in Qatar, right? Who do Al Jazeera? The Al Jazeera, right? Pr trumpets human rights and democracy to the world, and that's an absolute monarchy with no. Well, let me just stop you. And CNN's had their own p producers quit and say when they're in Qatar and they're machine gunning men, women, and children. CNN will not let that go on the news with little CIA Anderson Cooper, the twit. But let's just let's but just stop but, 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 but sure, but let me inject finish, this hmm? to finish the point. Just just the ideas. These these countries, uh, these monarchies use anti-Israeli, anti-U.S. As, as, a, as a way to keep themselves in power. In other words, if I'm out there demonstrating against the House of Saud, that's bad for the House of Saud. But what they can say now is go out and demonstrate against the U.S. Of course, go out, you know, those infidels, they're no good. This is a way to relieve the tremendous pressure building up on the Saudi monarchy and these, these crazy uh, absolute uh, monarchies and these Gulf Emirates.
No, I agree with you. And this is my next point. We've got to get into the economy, Tarpley. I really want to get your take on that, Doc. Is that people ask why the West helped trigger some of the first parts of the Arab Spring. That was because with their Google uh, predictive programming, they admit that they know when dollar devaluation globally causes food prices to go up, where people are making two bucks a day on average and 60% of their money goes to food, you're not just now hungry, you're starving. That's going to cause unrest, so they want to trigger it to try to direct it. And so that's why they've tried to have it be a, a Sunni-based, you know, Saudi Arabian-backed takeover and have it be sectarian revolution instead of economic revolution. Do you agree with that statement? Uh, let me I would just correct a couple of things. The reason the price of oil goes up and the reason the price of food goes up is speculation, speculation, speculation. Which is dollar devaluation. No, it, it, it's not the same thing. It's direct speculation in these markets using derivatives. Sure, you know but, uh, but, but the QE has, has also made prices go up globally. That's not debated. Um, I, nobody's willing to admit. None of, none of the people writing in these, in these financial newspapers. Well, I don't care if they don't admit it. There is inflation caused by the monetization of debt. Yeah, but the, the, the main reason those prices are going up is because of credit derivatives and other derivatives that are used. Yeah, if but because think, dollars aren't worth anything, everybody's rushing into farmland and food and all that. That's also compounding it. Yeah, but I don't think that's the main okay, thing. Okay, but listen, let's not argue about little bitty points. Get into the economy. No, Where is it globally? Point. Okay, go ahead. Where is the economy worldwide right now with this announcement of unlimited QE? Yeah, again, I, I think for the average person, a certain amount of inflation is a good thing. I think uh, optimum inflation for the U.S. right now would be 5 to 7 percent. We've got the American people crushed by $1 trillion of consumer debt, crushed by $1 trillion of... So you like the Federal debt. Reserve policy of, of... No, I just think this emphasis on inflation gets, gets nobody anywhere. This is, a, this is a, you know, sort of an Austrian school red herring. Well, I this agree that it's not going to be that much inflation because the money's being transferred to elites and, and to buy up bad paper. It's being hoarded, right? We know there's a capital strike. There's a capital strike where the American corporations are hoarding a couple of trillion dollars, which they refuse to invest. How about a nice uh, tax on undistributed profits to... Why don't these crazy corporations invest and get people going? Do they think they're really going to get out of a violent revolution in this country and people rioting? I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, they should be investing in productive investment, plant and equipment, new jobs, new technology. But they don't do this. Now, let, let's look at this QE. you got to imagine the world economy, or let's say the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy is the victim of a vampire attack, or we might want to say a zombie attack. And the zombie attack in 2007, 2008, again, was done with derivatives, derivatives, collateralized debt obligations, credit default swaps, these kinds of things. And this is also what's, what's used to drive up the, uh, the, the, uh, the raw material prices. Since then, we've had Count Dracula has had his fangs in our throat and he's sucking our blood. And the, the answer that the Federal Reserve has had is what you'd call a hot money stimulus and it just says we're going to flood the banking system with with cheap money zero percent in most cases all right webster stay and there we gotta go to break it's a it's a hard break you know you're on the genesis network we gotta go to break right here a network break we'll be right back with webster griffin tarpley on the other side to break down exactly what's happening with qe unlimited he's the vampire slayer there he is von helsing Okay, Webster, you got interrupted uh, there by the break. Dr. Webster Griffin, Tarpley, tarpley.net. You can follow his Twitter and Facebook there. Our Twitter and Facebook are also linked at Infowars.com. Real Alex Jones at Twitter. Uh, going back to Webster. Uh, Webster, please continue in this short segment, the one little segment coming up. Then Max Kaiser is joining us to get into the economy in depth. Uh, you were making the point about the vampire uh, has, been, has been sucking on us lovingly. Uh, telling us that uh, we've got a vampire on us because we're uh, we're bad people, and but if, but if we'll just give the vampire more blood, he'll fix everything. So this this vampire is a black hole. No amount of blood will ever satisfy the undead. Well, as you said, you you coined the term. I think zombie banks ten years ago, or I, I think that's attributed to you. Zombies are quite popular now, so maybe it's fitting we're ruled by zombie banks, uh, Webster. Look, the, the Count Dracula metaphor goes like this. We, we were attacked by Count Dracula the vampire in 2007, 2008. And ever since then, he's got his fangs in our throat. 
Now, along comes Bernanke, and Bernanke says, oh, let's give a transfusion to the poor victim, except they don't give the transfusion directly into the victim, us, the economy. They give the transfusion to Count Dracula. So they say, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll pipe the blood in through Count Dracula, and we'll make his fangs go into reverse, and that blood will then arrive into the victim. It doesn't work because of the black hole, because of what you just said. The mass of kited, bankrupt derivatives in the zombie banks, in the too-big-to-fail uh, money center banks of Wall Street, absorbs all the liquidity. Uh, or they take hot money. Uh, that's what, what the Fed is generating. The hot money flees overseas. It goes to the hottest speculative market, right? be it Kuala Lumpur or Warsaw or whatever it is. It flies there. So this is this is what also brings down the uh, the dollar. The dollar is weakened to some degree because of the of the effects. So of the where system. is it headed? Do you agree with Kaiser that we're going to have a huge implosion by next April? Now, let's see. Let, let's just go through what the alternatives are. What could you do to fight this depression? One is have an immediate deflationary crash, right? That's what Ron Paul wanted. He said, let's go back to the good old days of the crash of 1920 that brought the world Mussolini. I'm sorry, that's not a good, good, good one. Then we have a uh, consumer-led Keynesian stimulus, which is pretty much what the, the stimulus, right, the Obama-Pelosi stimulus of 2009 Pay was. Pay all their friends. That's, that's better. It, that has some effect. But ultimately, as soon as yeah, because because Rachel Maddow does does go out and buy some pants and uh, you know things like that. No, I mean, but there were things there were uh, the the main thing in there that was good was aid to the states so that the states could maintain their payrolls of policemen, firemen, teachers, and people that we need to keep human civilization going. But unfortunately, that doesn't get you an economic recovery. Then the third the third possibility is this hot money, which is what the Fed has been doing. I want the fourth possibility. My fourth possibility is this. Take that QE3, take that money, and it's practically 0%, and use that to buy bonds from American states that want to build hard infrastructure. But that we would actually build, build America up. We can't do that. That would, Yeah, but that's what you want. That's what we should be campaigning for. Not to abolish the Fed. No, don't abolish the Fed. We Nationalize the Fed. it nationalize it well yeah then take the power of the purse back into congress and then and give that to the states yeah it's not even the power of the purse right the power of the purse is in the treasury we need a national bank and the national bank yeah but western the congress debt. controls the power of the purse as you know yeah and that's what that's the way this should be in other words the treasury is one thing under congressional but see that doesn't let them pick winners and losers they'd rather rule a pile of skulls than you'd live in picking, paradise you'd be picking winners and losers in this sense you'd be saying zero percent credit does not go to zombie banks hedge fund hyenas anymore we've tried it for the past four years bernanke has been offering oh no they won't even give federal credit. they won't even give the federal contracts to small businesses and the law says they should i just stay there webster one more minute i want you to have five more minutes to finish up your statement on the economy. Then we'll get Max Kaiser's take on this. Let me tell you, we're in some crazy times. Stay with us. I'm flies when you're talking about global financial meltdown and possible giant increased wars. The Middle East is already bedlam. Webster, I know you're trying to get out solutions here. And, and I got to say, if you're going to have quantitative easing, it should go to the states and it should go to zero percent loans to the public instead of foreign banks that have hijacked our country. I mean, what you're saying is true. I, I cannot disagree with you. You're 100 percent right. And I want to have you back up. You know, things are so important right now. If, if you want to come back on, uh, I'm taking off Friday to take my son uh, bird hunting. I promised him forever. But uh, if, if you'd like to come on sometime next week or, or maybe even Wednesday or Thursday or something, we'll see. You know, to continue just on solutions. We did that a few weeks ago for an hour and a half. People really enjoyed that talk on InfoWars Nightly News. But I understand you're trying to put out solutions here, but talking to you privately, uh, I, I, mean, I mean, I really want your view on this. Geopolitically, where is the world right now? I mean, I see all the parallels everywhere. Everybody's going into conflict because of the economic depression. I mean, where is the world? We are in a global depression or is it a global recession? And how bad is the danger going into next year? I ask you the time frame on, on further collapse and you came up with solutions. Look, I get you want to give us solutions. I want your I want your prognosis on the economy. The, the reason I do this is because doomsayers are a dime a dozen, right? Every, new, every little newsletter has some 
uh, prediction of the end of the world. But you're what, not but, a dime a dozen. I want what you what think. People really, people want solutions. That's the the whole world history depends on getting out of a depression, and that takes solutions. Um, I would say right now we've got uh, the QE3 from Bernanke coming into play. On the European side, we've got Draghi and his pledge to provide uh, support for euro bonds. Um, you know, there's always a danger when you go into September, October, and this the, the transition from the third quarter to the fourth quarter. That can always blow up under these depression conditions. But let's just, uh, where are we in a broader sense? You're in this three-part process, right? Depression, dictatorship, world war. And we've got symptoms of all three all around us. It's not coming in a neat, you know, one, two, three. These, these parts, the phases interpenetrate, unfortunately. Um, so we've got, to, we've got to break out of this. Uh, one of the effects of the depression part is that the Anglo-American ruling class is more insane than they usually are, and they're looking for utopian solutions. In particular, I would say the uh, consultative conference, the, 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 essentially the Friends of Syria that met in Tehran, Iran, about a month ago with 30 countries representing really more than half the world, right? Russia, China, India, Indonesia, Pakistan, and, and Iran, Syria, all kinds of countries. The, the isolation of Iran has not worked. And we've, ju we've just had the non-aligned conference in <clears throat> Tehran with, what, 130, 135 countries coming together uh, in Tehran and, and, and uh, you know, talking about uh, world affairs in various ways. The isolation of Iran has not worked. For the Anglo-American ruling class, they would have to say, maybe they've come to the point of diminishing returns with the color revolution strategy. Maybe it's time to go back to the war strategy, the mad dog, neocon, fascist, aggressor stance that we had under, under Bush Cheney. And again, all those guys are grouped around Obama. Uh, sorry, they're grouped around. They're grouped around uh, Romney. They're grouped uh, around both of them, bud. It's like a Don King fight. No, no. If you look at these individuals, the neocons, the hardcore ideological neocons, they're with Romney, not with Obama. They're not with Obama. Look at them again. You got uh, you got uh, John Bolton. You got Dan Senior. You've got Robert Kagan, Robert Joseph. Well, that's what Pachinik says. He says oh. if they get back in, they're going to stage new 9-11s. Yeah, if 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 Romney comes in on the on the twentieth of January, he may invade Syria on February first. I mean, you'll have a hundred days of war with Romney. A vote for Romney is a vote for Netanyahu, his bosom buddy since nineteen seventy six. So All right, we're going to have to talk about this next time, Webster. We'll set you up uh, to, to uh, break more of this down. Uh, your Skype gets cut out when the music's playing. That's an anomaly. Uh, we'll be right back with Max Kaiser. Thank you, Doctor Tarpley. We are live, ladies and gentlemen, into another hour. Just uh, had Dr. Webster Griffin Tarpley on breaking down the geopolitical ramifications of what's happening in the Middle East, Africa, and Central Asia and beyond. And, of course, we're now looking forward into 2013 and what is happening with the U.S. dollar and other currencies. QE Unlimited announced, so the Federal Reserve kept their promise in a sick way, they said no QE3. They promised a year and a half ago. Now it's QE unlimited. Unlimited further trillions, 85 billion a month. The media is saying 40 billion. It's actually 85 billion a month to buy up derivatives and things from Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, usual suspects. And then the news, liberal and conservative, gets up there and tells you it's your debt and you're lazy and you're not working enough, even though Americans work more than anybody in this world now, unless you're a poor Chinese slave and a Sweatshop. The average American has two and a half jobs and less to show for it. And many economists say we've lost more wealth than you know, any other point in history. And it's happening worldwide because the system is kleptocratic. They want the casino gulag model that our next guest coined that term. That is what they want. And it's important to understand that the globalists are waging war against liberty and freedom, period. Whether it's Obama, whether it's Mitt Romney. The same power structure, there's different arms of it, different groups, but they basically all want the same thing. And as a society, we have to wake up to this and understand that they're going to pose as the saviors when they are the engineers, the authors of the economic situation that we're entering. Now, 
I want to be clear about this, my friends. When you bring in the geopolitical analysis and you bring in the West funding Al Qaeda and putting them in Libya and Syria to destabilize those countries, when you look at the West clearly uh, allowing the killing of the ambassador to hype up anti Islamic fear to be projected onto Syria and Iran, even though they're not the authors of it, I'm not defending them either. It's just that it's known the West is running Al Qaeda, not Syria and, uh, and Iran. So that they can give Israel cover, that is elements in Israel, to launch a war on Iran. Then you've got to ask, why, why do they want that? Well, they claim because Iran wants to nuke them. So it's a very, very dangerous period we're in, to say the least. And we need to force real issues out there. The articles that you see at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com are absolutely essential, tracking every angle as it unfolds. It is so important that people actually understand Al-Qaeda is run by the West. Here's some of the latest headlines. Is DHS preparing for false flag attack on American shopping malls? Neocons engineering October surprise, question mark. New York Times spins new video of Ambassador Stevens. Claims the people carrying his dead body were helping him as they slapped him in the face and laughed at him and said Allah Akbar. New York Times again thinks we're idiots. Video, Syrian rebels burn American flag while Obama sends the millions of taxpayer money. A world on the verge of war. The world's already in war. Zero hedge. That is just some of what we've got up there. Israeli envoy. U.S. will go to war in Iran in 2013. How QE3 will make the wealthy even wealthier while causing living standards to fall for the rest of us. That is just some of the news at PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com. Now, understand, before we go to Max Kaiser, we're going to him here momentarily, joining us from Europe. I know part of the times he's in Paris, part of the time in London, we'll have to ask him where he's, uh, where we've called his Skype ID from. Before we go to uh, London, before we go to Max Kaiser, you have to understand, I'm the expert in the police state and in the covert takeover of local police, the spy networks. That's where I've done 17 years of research and, and, and pioneering areas. I bring you other pioneers like Max Kaiser, the inventor of the virtual stock exchange system used on most markets today. I bring you people like Tarpley. I bring you Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former head of the Treasury and policy. Charlotte Isserby, head of policy, Department of Education. You know, Ron Paul, you name it. We bring all these experts on with, with some different views, but it pretty much converges on where reality's at. And... You need to understand that what, what adds to this, the reason I know we're in deep trouble, because we're always hearing about Iran war, we're always hearing about collapse, we're always hearing about this. We know the globalists want this to be incremental, but the 1.4 billion bullets, the checkpoints, the martial law preparations, uh, the digging in by governments, all of this is set up to handle a foreign World War III scenario, but also a domestic takeover, using a global crisis as the pretext to take over domestically. They've lined it all up, the spies, the checkpoints, the re-education centers. I'm not trying to scare you. I believe you have courage and will then speak out so this doesn't happen because our only hope is stopping it. That said, that's why I'm so concerned because it's more converging than just economics and Al-Qaeda and Israel. And elections, there is a fundamental shift towards hot tyranny taking place, not just here, but in every industrialized country under this unified corporatist system that's anti-liberty. So people better get smart. People better get wise fast or it's all over. You've heard my basic breakdown, Max. Add any points you have to this, MaxKaiser.com, uh, TV host on BBC, Press TV, RT, you name it. Break down uh, your take on what I was just basically setting the table with, and then let's get into QE Unlimited. And I guess this really adds credence to your collapse hypothesis by April of next year. We're already in somewhat of a collapse, but you're saying a total collapse, and define what that is. Max Kaiser, thank you for joining us. Yo, Alex, great to be here. Yeah, 28 weeks to go uh, during that 20, next 28-week period. Looking for a total collapse. I put my my flag, planted my flag, and I'm going to stick with that uh, with that with that uh, prediction. But to follow up on this casino gulag, I just sent you a story because there's something new that I think you need to look at. Uh, Corrections Corps of America, which is the biggest private prison operator in America, they're listed on the stock exchange. They're going around America from state to state, and they're getting the local state governments to give them the business of running the prisons in those states. 
in exchange that the states have to guarantee 90% occupancy rate at the prisons, which means that the states have to go out and arrest people to put them into the prison at, per a deal that they've made with the prison prison operator to take over the prisons from the state. So that's part of the casino gulag. You've got the state and the corporation making a deal to, to they build, they guarantee 90% occupancy. And the only way you can do that is if you tell the police, just go arrest people. Doesn't matter what, if they're guilty or not, just arrest them, put them into jail because that's what the deal says. And that's, that's sweeping the nation from coast to coast in America, private prisons. On the casino front, you've got Zynga, which is a virtual currency company. They are now aggressively transforming themselves to be able to do legal online gambling. That's something I've been telling you will happen. Their business model so far was a Trojan horse. It's not a very good business model unless you work up to the point where you're doing online gambling, which is what they're going to be doing now. Facebook in the U.K. right now in London. They're going to offer online gambling. Uh, gambling is already legal in Europe, already legal in the U.K., so they'll be making money doing the gambling. So the Gulag Casino uh, economy is, is, is moving forward, and that's the big trend I see going forward. And, um, yeah, the, the, the breakdown, the quantitative easing. Quantitative easing uh, to, to infinity, as it's being called, $40 billion a month, uh, month after month to buy back mortgage-backed securities, the, the Federal Reserve System has basically capitulated to the speculators. There's no pretense now about doing anything constructive for the economy. They only do what's best for speculators. Speculators have huge losses on their books, and to bail the speculators, or the too big to fail banks, as some call them, the Federal Reserve is now guaranteeing 0% interest rates until 2015, and to buy every losing bet on the books of the banks for, uh, that they have now, every losing bet that they'll make going forward for the next three years, the Fed will buy it. The Fed will do this by swapping treasury bills for bad debts, bad bonds, and expanding their balance sheet from $2 trillion to $3 trillion to $5 trillion, and they keep increasing that, uh, which you could call a black hole of debt, which it has to be paid, and the way that it's paid in countries around the world is by imposing austerity measures. That's where the nickels and dimes are collected to pay off the debt for the a swap that's being made and Max, by the federal. Yeah. And Max, even though this is destructive, that's the method of the madness. They admit it's a post-industrial system where they're expanding their profit while destroying you to make you poor so they, so they can control you. And you mentioned... The incredible immorality and corruption of the big prison companies lobbying at state governments. This is in the news to give huge sentences to nonviolent people so they can get your tax money, housing them so they can work for 20 cents an hour, driving down everyone else's wages. It is a genius plan. And we now have the biggest prison population in the world. And they're just getting started. They're now arresting mothers whose children play in the front or backyard. Uh, they're now uh, taking children for no reason, packing the prisons. The People ask, where are the concentration camps? Here they are. These are the new slave camps. And the so-called conservatives say, good, make them criminals work. Yeah, and you wonder why you don't have a job now, buddy, or why you've had your pay cut. You can't compete against 5 million people in prisons, in factories right now. Exactly right. And uh, I think that... What will be available in these prisons is that you'll be able to go online and you'll be able to participate in the casino economy uh, to view pages on sites like Facebook, which are then used as collateral to justify their multi-billion dollar capitalizations on the stock exchange. So we already have that in China. People in China go online and they do what's called gold mining, where they, they are slave gamers. They're gamers and they're enslaved to slave masters and their job 24 seven. And some, sometimes they game for three or four days straight and drop dead while they're out there trying to- Stay there, stay there, stay there. And what Max Kaiser is breaking down here eloquently, I know doesn't go above the heads of our old time listeners, but new listeners, he's not joking. The big prison companies, there's three major ones, a lot of subsidiaries, 
openly lobby to throw people in jail for years for nothing. That's why they keep nonviolence in jail and release the violence because they're hard to deal with. Uh, you know, these big correction court people, they want the minimum and medium. They don't want the high security. And they want the violence out there scaring everybody. But the pot smoker, oh, they're going to put you to work uh, doing all sorts of data entry, not just making furniture and license plates. They do everything now. And uh, it's Shawshank Redemption. You know, where the prisoners are building the roads. People are like, good, make them prisoners build roads. Lazy, boy. Yeah, well, you're not going to have a job building roads now. So that's what's going on. You think we're just competing with Mexico and China and India? Uh-uh. Think again. You're competing with 5 million prisoners plus, and it's growing. And Max, getting into this, I mean, they're going ahead with it. My point is this is a planned implosion. This is a planned program of takeover by the oligarchs. They admit it. And so people like Tarpley, who's a great guy, he's always wants to bring out solutions. The globalists don't care. They're in control. They're going ahead with this. Tell me if you agree or disagree, and then break down for us uh, what what this unlimited QE is going to mean, your analysis of exactly where this new QE, where this th this new money transfer to the bankers is going, Max Kaiser. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll answer both questions. I want to follow up on the uh, prisoner story. You're right. The, uh, the, the prison labor in America is becoming a big problem. The same governors of these states who are signing these deals with private prison operators are also complaining to the federal government that the prison operators are take are competing for jobs. The, the prison population now is uh, people are getting arrested to go to prison to uh, as a way to participate in the labor force. That's about, and they're working for a dollar, two dollars a day. But to follow up on the gaming uh, aspect, I just sent you an email to a link to a story here: Chinese prisoners forced to slay dragons, mine gold, and online games. Uh, prisoners at a labor camp in northern China are forced to slay dragons and battle wizards and online games to earn virtual gold that the prison guards sell for real currency. Uh, and this is, uh, this, is ha this is what's going to happen in America with companies like Zynga and others. You go to prison for, as part of the deal with the prison operator, then you're forced to play games to earn the credits in the games that are then converted to real money. By the way, you predicted conversion. this five years ago on my show. How did you do it? Because, Max, here it is. Chinese prisoners forced to slay dragons, mine gold, and online games because then they're made to go to state-run or other-run things for basically fake advertising hits that never really happened, just like Facebook caught with bots visiting its sponsors' ads. Just everything is fraud-based. It's, it's total scam. Right. Well, when you introduce me, you say, OK, I introduced the virtual specialist in the virtual market. That is the basis for virtual trading for virtual goods online. So I, I know the market very, very well. And my technology, you know, there's an interesting history there, but uh, well, I'm not going to get into it. But here you see in China the game market where you can play these virtual environments and you earn virtual trinkets and virtual swords, et cetera in these multi-level player games, uh, they then can convert those into cash, into yuan or other currencies, and then that money is taken from the from the from the guards and the people who run the prison and they there's so there's a market gamers. yuppies and trendies playing video games and paying money to get trinkets and paying money to be part of this they are financing slaves in chinese commie death camps doing this so 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 the false reality is now supplanting the real reality and is slave driven Right. People to play Farmville, which is a Zynga game through Facebook, and they give them $500 to so they can raise virtual strawberries. There are prisoners in China that are being forced to, to trade on these exchanges to make virtual products and virtual farming so that the prison operators can cash in the money, the gold, so they're earning as a way to increase. It's a slave labor racket. And they play these things 24-7, and there are stories now every week where people in Asia who are being slave gamers are, are playing three or four days in a row, and then they just drop dead from exhaustion. And this, this is happening almost well, on a weekly Well, this is also the beginning now. of being put into the matrix. This is people plugging in, becoming programmed. We, we, we've got an 18-minute segment coming up, Max, so I want to really get into the technicals, because I know you've analyzed this Federal Reserve announcement, the private banking cartel's announcement. It's virtual money. The Federal Reserve deals on virtual money. It's another big virtual game. 
Exactly, except they put us in prisons to fund it. Because at the final equation, it's all based on tying us in to their Ponzi scheme, their false reality, their matrix. Stay there. Max Kaiser at MaxKaiser.com joining us. We'll also give you his Facebook, Twitter, other sites here in a moment. Uh, any other sites you'd like to plug. But I want listeners to understand, I spend all my time trying to understand this and trying to be accurate. I mean, we don't get up here and go, oh, well, our listeners will like it more if we like Mitt Romney. So, you know, let's say nice things about him or people will like us if we say nice things about Obama. It's just, OK, what's the truth? And let's cover it. Uh, quite frankly, if I had to calculate and sit here and mince words, I couldn't do it. There's no teleprompters. There's no talking points. There's just research. And I look at articles like this one. This is out of the Times of Israel. I don't want to be the complicit in an Israeli strike on Iran, says U.S. Army chief. Martin Dempsey warns that while it may delay the Iranian reactor program, an Israeli military campaign could also unravel international sanctions on the Tehran regime. Well, it's a lot more than that. And I want to get Max's geopolitical take on it. He was trying to finish up about this virtual reality. That's what it is. It's Ponzi scheme operators that with, with fractional reserve banking, for every dollar you have in the bank, you know, they're loaning out $10, roughly. Now they've transcended that to just total derivatives, and they don't care if you never had a deed with them and that they don't own your house. They just come take it, and the court rules it's theirs. Uh, this is the type of stuff that we're dealing with now, where they're just setting the precedent where foreign banks can steal trillions and not get in trouble. Carzine can steal $1.6 billion, get caught lying to Congress, doesn't get in trouble. Wells Fargo can be caught laundering $376 billion in narcotics, running the narcotics aircraft. Nobody gets in trouble. They pay less than a 1% fine. So I'm saying, oh, you got caught kidnapping a little kid and chopping their head off. That's a $25 ticket. I mean, it, it's, it, it's a new kind of corruption. I've studied history. There's been some bad ones. This one... Is, is, is a bunch of globalists exempt who meet in these big boardrooms where no one can be blamed and everyone has plausible deniability. I mean, it's, it's, it's madness, and it will come down. It's got Titanic written all over it. Max Kaiser, I want you to really finish your point you're trying to make going to break because when music starts, then the Skype can't go over it. It causes this weird interlacing problem. So the last 10 seconds of your saying wasn't heard. Finish up with that, and then looking at this, your collapse prediction, getting into analyzing where the virtual QE is going, another transfer to the bankers. The media will tell us it's our debt, and people will buy it. I mean, they'll tell us Al-Qaeda's coming when the government runs Al-Qaeda. I mean, if, if people just had any smarts, they'd know we're already living in a virtual reality. This show, your website, what we do are a few of the islands of half-sanity. I mean, this is really out of control, and 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 now it, it, it's becoming even crazier. Max Kaiser. Yeah. Okay. If you compare virtual currencies that you find on game sites like Zynga, Farmville, etc., compared to the U.S. dollar and what happens at the Federal Reserve Bank, they have one very important, uh, common characteristic. Neither one of these currencies pays an interest rate. They pay zero percent interest rate. Now, why is this important? The interest rate is the price of money. It tells you what money is worth, is the interest rate that comes attached to it. When people in America now go to the job to work for a living, they get paid in dollars that have no interest rate attached to them whatsoever because they have no value whatsoever. They're being debased by $40 billion a month now due to quantitative easing, on top of quantitative easing one and two, on top of a multi-hundred trillion dollar derivatives market, on top of central banks all over the world printing money uh, willy-nilly every single second of every single day at zero percent interest rate. So you have only speculation to deal with, no real honest living, no way for banks to make an honest living lending money for a return based on a higher interest rate because all interest rates across the board are zero. They loan money back to central banks who give them a subsidy that's taken out of the hide of the population through austerity measures. Yes, that's true. But that's not a functioning economy. That's not a working economy. So 0% interest rates are the telltale sign that we're not dealing with a currency that has intrinsic value whatsoever. And one currency that does have intrinsic value, it also pays no interest. But over the past 5,000 years, it has proven itself to be intrinsically valuable is gold and silver, and of course, they're continuing to do extremely well, as we've been saying on your show for a number of years, because as the Reserve Bank 
continues this Ponzi scheme of paying off bad debt by printing new money, by taking all this toxic securities off the balance sheets of banks and replacing it with new money, uh, then the people who own gold around the world, of course, are increasing their positions. And I said on your show last time, the wild card here is China. China is surreptitiously accumulating vast quantities of gold. The last time the government formally announced what their gold position was, it was a, a surprise 500-ton increase. My sources tell me that by the end of the year, they'll come out and say, we don't have 1,000 tons of gold. We have 2,000 tons of gold officially on our way to becoming four or 5,000 tons of gold because they realize that when the global implosion occurs between now and April 15th of next year, my window of implosion, the countries with the gold are the ones who are going to survive the best. The U.S. ostensibly has 8,000 tons of gold, although there is a lot of debate as to whether that's been loaned out and they don't really own that gold anymore. China's going to be on their way to owning three or 4,000 tons of gold. Uh, Germany's got 3,000 tons. The IMF has a large gold position. Uh, that's what's going to matter once you have the implosion of these paper market cur fiat currency positions and they have to sit down and figure out, okay, what's the new currency grid? And they have to uh, mark to market all this paper against gold like they did at Brenton Woods after World War II, and they're the price to adjust to account for all this paper means that gold at the minimum, at the very, very minimum, would be $7,000 an ounce. You can say it could be a lot higher than that, but at the very minimum, if you take all the fiat money that's sloshing around on the, on the Fed's balance sheet and in the system, and you were to monetize that in a way that would account for all of the excess slush funds that are sloshing around, you come up with a revaluation at gold $7,000 an ounce. And that's where we're headed. That's what's going to happen between now, some kind of total breakdown and remonetization of gold between now and April 15th of 2013. That's my window. That's my target. Um, so <laughs> it would, the, the, the triggers that we mentioned uh, on the last show, Alex, you know, we went through a number of triggers because in the globe today there are all kinds of things that are in the background. The Iran-Israeli situation obviously is heating up. That's a potential trigger. Uh, you've got the South African labor unrest, which is shutting down platinum mining. Platinum has now been skyrocketing. That's a trigger. The LIBOR scandal. Remember Barclays and all these money center banks were found to be uh, manipulating LIBOR. That has yet to fully blossom into the global scandal that it will be. That's a multi-hundred billion, trillion dollar scandal uh, going forward. You've got drought. Here's key, Alex. He's very, very key, what I'm about to say. Before the Arab Spring, before the revolution in Egypt, before what we saw in Cairo, the price of wheat had got to $8.50 a bushel, which means that the average Egyptian was paying 40 to 50% of their income on food. Well, guess where the price of wheat is now because of quantitative easing, because of all the lax money figures around the world. Price of wheat is now $9.50 a bushel. It's at an all-time high. That means that these people are starving again, even worse than they were before the massive revolutions that happened. And is that because of effect. speculation or is it also because of just basic dollar devaluation? Dollar devaluation, but remember, when you keep interest rates at zero, the cost of borrowing to speculate is zero, because that, that's what I mean. When so I they've say created a climate where they can totally take over. Here's my question. What do you expect to play out, not just by next April? Describe what this total collapse looks like, and then what you see as possible futures going out, because as Brzezinski's admitted three years ago, and again in his book this year, People are awakening to the shadow government, the banking cartel. They're not going to be able to just put in new puppets in England or Europe or here. They're announcing a banking dictatorship in Europe, admitting a super federal system over the countries that you and I talked about many years ago. So now so much of this is out in the open. Uh, do they think the domestic police states they've set up are going to be able to protect them during this conversion to total tyranny? The, the, it goes back to the beginning of the conversation, Alex. The, the, the prison uh, business is booming. America's got the biggest prison population in the world. The prison business is booming, and they're, they're, it's like a funnel. They're just channeling people into these prisons where they enter this casino gulag economy. And that's, that's where we're headed, and that's what people need to resist. And, that's and then your answer. sentence is, here's the L.A. Times, your sentence is to slay 500 dragons, which would take 10 years on the world of Warcraft. You then go play games uh, on there, clicking on ads, 
for people that companies have sold ads to, and they have contracts to have prisoners click on the ads. I mean, and they, Facebook got caught with robots clicking on them, so now they won't even need humans, so just get rid of them entirely. I mean, this is just, this is right. insane. Virtual, virtual, virtual mining and virtual farming, because it deals with electrons and the cost of electrons is zero, it's a highly, it's a big profit business. That's why they, the prison labor is not going to be building roads and the prison labor is not going to be, be weaving baskets. They're going to be digitally online participating in games because the cost of producing games and the cost of converting your time as a prisoner playing games into a, a virtual currency that can be converted to dollars or yen or, or other currencies yeah. is, is fantastically more profitable than to go out and build a road because building a road is still you have to get the tar, you have to get the picks, you have to go out there into the sun. It actually costs money. And so the you have to know what you're doing. You have to compete. But instead, you're just mega bankers putting cancer viruses in everybody's vaccines and fluoride in their water to dumb them down. And you just got everybody bowing to you because you've got unlimited digital currency that they pay you in labor to be able to use. You know, I saw an article in ABC News last right, Friday. Right, right, just cut, cut in for a second. That, take that thing that you just said, apply it to the Federal Reserve. If you have a job that's not in prison, you working at your local fast food restaurant, if they pay you in U.S. dollars that pay 0% interest rate, they're paying you in a gaming currency. It has no value. That's what I'm saying. These dollars, whether it's a U.S. dollar from the Fed or it's a Zynga dollar from an online gamer, they're equivalent. And they're so now they're going to merge the two. Yeah, absolutely. But just stopping there again, Max Kaiser, inventor of the virtual trading specialist system that's the backbone of much of this system today. It's kind of like creating the hydrogen bomb. I'm sure you're proud of yourself. I'm just joking. It's how they apply it. But, but I mean, Max, expanding on this, last Friday I saw an ABC News article. Guys, will you print it for me? Because I had it in here during the weekend, but I can't find it. I meant to cover it yesterday, and it was court rules, police can be barred for too high an IQ. Now, I've seen this story more than 100 times the last 17 years on air. I see it all the time, but this guy lost a suit, and they told him, they said, you've got too high an IQ, and then I saw law enforcement websites defending it saying, smart people ask questions, and you get bored, and they basically admitted in these law enforcement sites and magazines that we want robots. So here are guys so dumb they say it's not good to be smart and agree with the federal court ruling that if you have over a 100 IQ, that's average, folks, you can't be a cop. Now, folks, it's not just cops. They want dumb people. That's why they put fluoride in the water, which Harvard admits brain damages you. The elite are so out of control, they're trying to create a suboid cattle group that they literally mine and feed. And now the globalists have said our new issue of the magazine coming out breaks this down. That they don't even want us anymore. They're going to go completely to robots that work on robots that work on robots with the autonomous drones and all the rest of it. So, Max, put your futurist cap on. Look into the future. Where is all this leading? Because the elites are now saying we don't even want them in the prisons. Let's just kill everybody. Well, it's heading. You don't have to look to the future. Look to the past. Look to the way Europe was run before the invention of the printing press, before the Enlightenment, before Diderot invented the encyclopedia. You had dumb serfs working for as indentured serfs for the Lord and Master. That's where we're going back to. The, the, the rich, the elite, they never liked the idea of having a middle class. They don't need a middle class. They would prefer just having a very small group of extraordinarily wealthy and everyone else is a serf. And that's where we're heading. We're and now they've, the said, now they've said, hey, let's just release a bioweapon and kill everybody. We go into underground bases and come out a year later. And everybody's dead. And I'm telling you, Max, I study them. They're going ahead with that plan. As soon as they've got their police state in place, as soon as the autonomous drones and robots are in place, they're going to release the bioweapon. Just well, be I, <laughs> I have a very, you know, it's, it's ironic because... The, the creation of the middle class in the Middle Ages was the result of the bubonic plague. The bubonic plague wiped out half the population. It was only then that the lords of the manor actually had to compete for labor, and they started to pay serfs money, real money. Well, it knocked out a lot of the entrenched elites. It killed a lot of the elite. That was a, a big plus, yeah. Well, it, cre well it, it knocked out the labor force, and they created this idea of paying labor, which created something called the middle class. So, I mean, the bioweapon destruction you're describing, if it, it, it could have a silver lining in that it could wipe out the population to the degree where people actually have to pay for labor again. But, of course, that would be a catastrophic 
a way to but get they didn't to have result. robots in 1400 <laughs> well that's correct they, the robots and they didn't have those in 1400 correct <laughs> Well, Max, I'm telling you, it's a very dark future we're facing, and people laugh today. Some of them out there, they're not going to be laughing in the future if we can't turn this around. What's your take uh, on on where they sent the QE3? Because, you know, it, 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 it's, it's been different goodies, you know, not just free money, but also, you know, just giving the money and, 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 and buying CRUD derivatives, which you've pointed out. They've accelerated the bailouts into derivatives. The problem is bigger than ever. Well, I mean, it, it, when Obama came into office in 2008, he, there was a fork in the road. He could have either bailed out the banks or bailed out the homeowners. He chose to bail out the banks because there was a theory there of the multiplicity of money effect, that if you bail out the banks, it increases more jobs, ultimately more growth in the system because of the fractional reserve system, the way it's constructed. And uh, there, But that was a mistake because had he actually just, written off 90% of all mortgages in America, of the, the people who own the mortgages, it not cost the banks, less. it would have cost much less. Because at the time they said, well, if you did that, it would have cost something like $12 trillion, and that's too expensive. Well, guess what? They are now working on spending and giving away and bailing out and printing upwards of $20 trillion. So the, 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 the cost now of bailing out the bankers, and by the way, that's done nothing to revive the housing but, market. But Max, at least, at least in 08, they admitted it was money to bankers. Now the media is like, you lazy scum, we have to give you more money. They've actually spun it in Europe and here that it's, that, that, that it's our debt when our debt's only $15 trillion. <laughs> Well, they need scapegoats, right, Alex? <laughs> uh, as they, they ramp up the uh, incinerators to get rid of the oversupply of people. They need scapegoats. We've seen that movie before. Yeah, I'm telling you, uh, you know, you knew George Soros. You've worked at the highest levels a lot of this. I mean, you know these people, some of them. I mean, what's wrong with them? Because I don't think they're going to get out of what they're creating. I mean, th things don't always I, I, go the I, way I, they want. I, I've, I've explained my, my thoughts on this before. You're dealing with the mentality of the suicide banker. It's similar to the suicide bomber. The suicide bomber who blows themselves up in the name of their fundamentalist, theocratic, religious, extremist view. Suicide bankers like Jamie Dimon, Lloyd Blankfein, Bob Dimon, they blow themselves up and the people around them in the belief of their market fundamentalist views that, uh, that are informed by a misreading of things like Adam Smith. They selectively read these things and to support their uh, market fundamentalist view. And they believe they're doing God's work. There's, there, that's, that's what you're dealing with, a suicide banker. And they, they are going down that path, and they're taking the entire economy down with them. And there's no doubt they're destroying the economy. There's no doubt we've been in a depression. There's no doubt they're about to make it a lot worse. Uh, no, and there, there, there is no doubt that the economy is, 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 is extremely fragile, that the unemployment numbers are continuing to look horrible, that the underlying dependence on food stamps and government sort of handouts is increasing uh, exponentially. The student loan bubble, another potential tr uh, trigger, Alex. You know, the subprime bubble was a trillion-dollar bubble that burst and caused problems. The student loan bubble is a trillion-dollar-plus bubble that's on the verge of busting. That's another potential trigger that could overnight uh, wipe out an entire um, class of individual and cause a problem. You also have uh, huge problems in the flash crash market, the program trading, the high frequency trading. You know, these reports are coming out every day now that the system is being completely uh, dominated by computers trading in billionths of a second in ways that are adding so much stress and so much complication and so much potential disaster scenarios. Uh, that professionals are walking away. Professional hedge funds, many hedge fund managers. Oh, no, the head of, I mean, I mean, all the big heads are starting to get out of it. So many of them. They walk away. They walk away because the risks are too great. It's like putting your hand into a blender, you know, and expecting to come out with something other than a bloody stump. It, it, the risk and reward is, is, is not favorable, and they're just not trading. They're walking away from this nightmare. What we're watching is a revolution of evil. We're watching a revolution of fraud. We're watching a revolution of insanity and a revolution of false reality and, 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 and Ponzi scams. 
absorbing the real world. This is a matrix like the birth of the matrix. Everybody wired into computers, people only caring about sitcoms and sports, while the real world goes on around them and drones kill whole villages for no reason. I mean, we are entering, I, I, there's articles pouring out where all the big pharma companies know most of their drugs actually hurt people and don't help them. And the vaccines, they're putting the stuff in the vaccines to spread the disease so they can sell more. And it's admitted, and nobody cares, it's admitted the fluoride's killing us, so they add it. I mean, it's all just funny. It's, it's like a bunch of crazy people have taken over. Well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll say something and I'll mention something. You're probably not going to like it, though. Because it's very, very kind of uh, sub subsurface type stuff, but you know, I got to I got to say that I am I I spent the last weekend attending the Bitcoin 2012 conference here in London, and on, on the surface, it sounds doesn't sound good, but when you get into what Bitcoin is really all about, Alex, it really is the currency of the resistance. Basically, if we are entering into an environment of 360 degrees of surveillance, of, of, the, of, of us being surveyed, every click of the mouse, every, every web page we view, every email totally read. Walking totally outside, we're being face scanned. Right. If that's where we're headed, then Bitcoin, which is, which is the value of Bitcoin is entirely tied to its crypt, cryptological uh, content. It's cryptology as a currency. And therefore, it really could be the currency of resistance going forward. On the surface, it's, it's hard to get there because you say, okay, it's a digital currency. And we just talked about how bad digital currencies are. And, you know, it's, it's a computer driven currency. And we just talked about how bad that is. But once you get down into the surface a little bit, you drill into what's really going on with Bitcoin, you find out that there's this thriving global community. Well, I'll say this. There's a lot of globalist connected groups I won't mention that, that do not like the word Bitcoin. They ban it on these government front sites out there that we know are government. Okay, well, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's a good sign, right? I mean, because the, the globalists hate Bitcoin because it's completely cryptologically, it's, it's no cost transaction. You can move money around at zero cost. Uh, it's the currency itself has a quote like any other currency. So it's like eleven dollars and eighty cents for Bitcoin. But that's not the main thing. The main thing is you can zip in and out of Bitcoin for z almost zero. Well, listen, cost. we're going to have to get you back on soon to talk about that. But uh, real quick, what's your bottom line on war uh, right now with Iran? I mean, is is that more saber rattling or? Well, I mean, it's a fast way to increase the prison population. It's like the, the prison owners are not happy with the rate at which they're increasing the prison population. So let's start a few wars because that'll increase prison population exponentially. That's, all, that, that's where you make your money in the globalist. How does a thing. war start uh, uh, make a bigger prison population? But with, we're prisoners of war. You know, with prisoners of war, our, 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 our legion, they're huge. Sure, also the contracts, the no-bids, all of it. Very intriguing, Max Kaiser, MaxKaiser.com. Give us your other websites. Uh, well, it's MaxKaiser.com. And, oh, yeah, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. I'm trying to get more Twitter followers, so follow me on Twitter. Absolutely, we are, too. It's important to have full-spectrum attack against the globalists. Max Kaiser, thank you so much. Always informative. Oh, oh my pleasure. Talk to you soon. All right, there goes Max. Always great having him. Skype was breaking up a bit, but it was still powerful information. We'll be covering more of this on the nightly news tonight, 7 o'clock Central, PrisonPlanet.tv. Uh, briefly, I want to show people on screen if you're watching uh, on PrisonPlanet.tv. If not, go to InfoWars.com on the right-hand side. Again, we'll put this on screen. Um, on the right-hand side of InfoWars.com, down from the top there, uh, you can see uh, here it says, Receive three free gifts. Buy two silver dollars uh, from our sponsor, Midas Resources. And this isn't a joke, folks. $72. Went up from 63 You notice it went up. Still an unbelievable deal. It's hard to get two silver dollars of that quality for 70 And that includes the American Dream film, the Obama Deception film, by the way, that we can't keep on shelves. It's not like we're selling something here we can't sell. And Dishonest Money book. All amazing. Free. Two free films and a book and silver dollars right at cost. Go to InfoWars.com, scroll down the page, and click on that to find the best deal at Midas Resources. And below that, they have some of their other best deals on gold 
and silver coins that are Alex Jones radio specials or call Midas Resources and tell them Alex Jones sent you. Everybody says that so they can track advertising, but with me, it does actually trigger something. An entire list of whatever their best deals or the best deals are that day. 800-686-2237. And Midas is always buying more gold. So they don't have what you want one day, call back the next, even though they have a huge selection. They got all sorts of weird stuff, too. They got it all, collectibles, numismatics, semi-numismatics, but mainly bullion. That's what Ted promotes the best, because you can you know, really clearly see what you're getting there. And Ted's the fifth biggest gold and silver company in the country now, uh, because he's got such competitive prices. 800-686-2237. Give Midas Resources a call. And pray for this country. Pray for peace in the world. God bless you all. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today.